Get the Hitman Atom and you're watching Lights Out. This is Fessel Khan for Lights Out proudly sponsored by Spartans Law. And I'm here at the iconic York Hall where I'm delighted to be joined by Big Mo. Uh, as we speak, I'm having to look so high up because Big Mo is one tall, beautiful, handsome oh, human being. <laughs> How you doing, Big Mo? I'm good. Oh, look at this. We got the branded microphone. Check this out. Lights out. Moving on up. I'm doing good, man. How are you? I'm very well, thank you for asking and thank you for shouting out the all new microphone foam. Absolutely. Um, yeah, York Hall, I mean, I'm pretty sure you've been here before. Yes. What's your first thought when you walk into York Hall? C can you smell boxing history? Actually, yeah, I think, um, you know, I don't know, I feel like God, there's been so much conversation about small halls recently and things like that, but I actually think this is the perfect venue for our breakthrough show. You know, we have a bunch of young talent on the card. It's headlined by Caroline Dubois. We have Vidal Riley. We have Callum Simpson, uh, Stephen McKenna. I mean, we, this is perfect for that type of talent, for this next-gen type of talent. I've heard this place is a rite of passage, so I love it here. I think it's cool. You know, you hear about the people that have fought here. This is one of the first, like, when I was preparing when I took this job, I obviously tried to educate myself a lot on the history of British boxing, and I was already familiar with a lot of it, and I learned about you know what this venue represents for the sport. So despite it being a little warm at times, I'm happy to be here again. Well, it's good to see you back in the, in the UK, Big Mo. And as you mentioned, we have got a, a, a breakthrough show here on Saturday night. And it's good to see that York Hall still gets a few shows during the, the boxing year. Um, and as you mentioned, Caroline Dubois, Vidal Riley, there's also some other good young talent on the card. Um, just how important is it that, you know, platforms like Sky Sports and Boxer are still sticking with York Hall and still trying to promote uh, small hall boxing? Well, I think it's, uh, above anything else, I think it's important to have variety. Um, I think it's important to have variety when it comes to fighters, matchups, venues, production. It's important to keep things fresh. And I think that York Hall is kind of a cool environment because the crowd is, feels more a part of the show because of how close they are. I mean, I'm in the ring and I can look the crowd in the eye and I damn near can shake their hand, you know, and that, that allows for a really cool environment for this type of show. Um, it's, a, it's a ruckus crowd when it's in here. It's hot. Hopefully it's not going to be as hot this time because the weather's a little bit cooler. But uh, to your point, I think it's important that, you know, that the people that produce the shows, whether it be promotions or whether it be broadcasters, I think it's important to do a show at your call or to do a, to do a show at these more historic venues because it keeps that a part of the sport. And history is important. I don't think, I never want to be a person to support forgetting history or moving on from it. Yes, this is a smaller venue. Absolutely. But this, I mean, how many world champions have come through this venue? Like I said, it's a rite of passage. Nonetheless, let's talk a bit about um, the progression that Sky Sports and Boxer have made this year. Let's look at the year in a whole. I mean, we've had the two, the two, well, three huge Manchester shows. Yep. If you look at uh, Savannah Marshall, Franchon Cruz de Zern's undisputed uh, fight, you had uh, Chris Eubank Jr., Liam Smith, number one and two fights. We had the great show down in Bournemouth, and we've still got this show. We've got... Dan Aziz versus Josh Bowatsi, which is a great fight. So what would you make of the progression of Sky Sports and Boxing this year, Mo? I'd love to see it. Um, I think that we also we have to keep in mind how early the relationship is and the partnership is. Boxer is building their stable. They came in with basically from scratch, right? And they're starting to produce world champions. They got a belt on Chris Billum Smith. Obviously, they brought a Coley to allow for that to even happen. You have Aziz and Bowatsi fighting for theoretically that number one contender spot got Caroline Dubois competing for a title tonight. So you have a lot of different pieces that are starting to come together. It's important to look at what they're building, the young roster that they have. You look at people like Adam Azim, you look at people like Callum Simpson and Vidal Riley and Ben Whitaker. It's important that that talent starts to really develop. And I think that that's the stage that often people forget. Like you remember when a boxer starts and then you remember when they're world champion, but you forget about that intermediary part where they really start to hone in on their talents, when they really start to sharpen their skills, and that's when world champions are created. World champions don't just wake up and they're at 20 fights, you know, 19, 20 wins. They had to get to that point, and I think that Boxer and Sky right now are in that phase, so I think it's exciting. As you mentioned, Sky Sports and Boxer had to, like, sort of start from scratch, and it was like they were trying to have to you know, sort of keep up the pace with the zone and Queensbury, who have been around for many, many years. And they've also come through at a time where social media influencer boxing, misfits boxing, 
it is really taken up as well. So, I mean, how much have you got to say that the, the progress of Sky Sports and Box has been a real success, given the fact that they only started back in 2021 and with the amount of shows that they put on, especially when you look at, you know, undisputed fights such as Savannah Marshall, Clarissa Shields, you know, Khan versus Brooke. I mean, they've put on some amazing shows over the past two years. I agree. Look, it's been, they've been moving at rapid pace, right? And, that, and they've been the victim of some adversity here and there, some injuries, like we saw Eubank Smith delayed because of an injury that then elevated Savannah Marshall Cruz to turn to the main event. So, but that's adversity. That's boxing. That always happens. Um, but they have been moving quickly, and they put on some great shows. I mean, Shields Marshall broke Sky viewership records, millions of viewers worldwide, first ever all-female card. Eubank Smith won, Eubank Smith two. Con Brook predated me. I wasn't there for that one. But... It's been exciting to see how it's been growing, and they're a byproduct of how strong the boxing market is. Think about it. Right now in the UK alone, you have four major promotions. All four have broadcast deals. Wasserman, Boxer, Matchroom, and Queensbury, right? And then you have Misfits on their own, who also has a broadcast deal. So right now, the competitive landscape is, is vast, which is a good thing. I believe it's a good thing because competition makes promotions work harder. It makes them produce better content to attract a viewer because now the viewers have options. Not only do the viewers have options, but the boxers have options as well. So every single promotion needs to up their game to attract talent and also attract viewership. So the competitive landscape to me right now is, is really, really interesting. As I said, you know, there is a lot of competition right now. And then there's also mentioned you've got uh, Misfits Boxing as well, who have put on some good shows as well, Absolutely. regardless of whatever, what your, whatever your opinion of uh, social media influence of boxing is. They put on one in Newcastle and they've got one um, in a couple of weeks time in Manchester. But at what point would you, obviously, because I know you work closely with Sky Sports and Boxer, at what point would you like to see Sky Sports and Boxer maybe sort of, I mean, we've seen shows in France, Poland, but what point would you like to see them maybe move over across the pond to your country, the US? I think the key thing is they need to move over at the right time. I think that you've, we've seen in the past boxing promotions maybe bite off more than they can chew, and they lose money in the process or they mess up relationships in the process. In my opinion, right now, Boxer and Sky are focused on dominating this market and getting to a point where they can. At that point, then you can start to explore expansion. It's not my job. I don't really deal with that side of the company. But I think right now, you know, Boxer and Sky are focused on building world champions. If that does take them abroad, fantastic. Um, like you said, we've gone to Paris, we've gone to Poland. We have had some boxer, boxer fighters represented in other countries. So, again, it's about growth, it's about development, and I think that that's Boxer and Sky's focus right now. Okay, let's just move on now. Let's talk a bit about the politics side of boxing. Uh, we saw Conor Ben make his return last weekend in Orlando, Florida. Um, more, it's kind of like the bad is outweighing the good, especially with the UK scene. And Eddie Hearn stating that he wants to make the Conor Ben versus Chris Eubank Jr. fight before the end of the year, preferably in the UK. I watched a few things on TalkSport. I've listened to a few interviews. A lot of people would still be very, very unhappy if Conor Ben was to fight in the UK against Chris Eubank Jr. or anybody else. Uh, as the situation's gone on, we've seen Conor Ben come back into the ring last Saturday night, last weekend. I mean, has your opinion on the, on the matter changed or is it still the same? I mean, I've had the same opinion since the start. Um, I don't believe that this is a Conor Ben situation or a Matchroom situation or a DAZN situation or anything. In my opinion right now, the concern needs to be you're setting a precedent. How you handle situations sets a precedent for any situation that comes after the fact. And right now, as it stands, to my knowledge, Conor Ben has not proved his innocence as it pertains to what happened. Being cleared to box is very different than being cleared in terms of clearing your name of what you did. Again, I don't know the nitty gritty. Does he have right to box in this country? Does he not? What's the board's take? That's not, to be honest, I'm not, I don't really care about that because as, all as, I, as far as I know, he hasn't proved his innocence yet. So coming from an athletic background, specifically coming from an athletic background that tested for steroids very heavily, American football, I care about him just clearing his name. Believe me when I tell you, Conor Ben, Chris Eubank Jr., you're damn right I want to watch it. But here's the problem. If Conor Ben and Chris Eubank Jr. happens without Conor Ben clearing his name, that will outweigh anything that happens from the show. That will be the number one point of discussion. That will be the number one thing in the media. That will be the number one question that's asked. But it shouldn't be. The focus of Conor Ben versus Chris Eubank Jr. should be Conor Ben versus Chris Eubank Jr. Right now, I don't think it would be, which is unfortunate. 
Um, so again, as someone that just supports structure and sports, that wants a fair and clean sport, I just want to make sure that every due course is taken appropriately, that right actions are made, and that ultimately that everything happens how it should be, and every and the pieces fall into place how they should. Again, it's not a Conor Ben situation, not a matchroom situation. I think it's just about protecting the sanctity of our sport. Robert Smith has had a few things to say, and do we need to look at this situation now and think, well, Conor Ben's done what he can to sort of prove some sort of innocence, you know. Um, yes, we would like to see a bit more proof behind what Conor Ben said, but isn't this where we need to look at UCAD and uh, VARD and sort of point the finger towards their direction? Because, I mean, they have the power to say, well, hold on a second. A sample's been given, here's a B sample, that's it, case closed. Is it that simple as it seems, or do you think there's more to the situation? It's, it's, not, a, it's not a finger pointing thing. In, in my opinion, it's, it's like this. If we, do, if we have a standard in the sport, but the standard isn't upheld, then what's the point of having one? It, it, it's like having rules, but if they're not followed, then what the hell's the point, right? I believe in structure. I believe in staying objective in certain situations. So I don't think it's a matter of saying, no, you did wrong, no, you did wrong, no, you did wrong. It's very simple. Was a rule broken, yes or no? Okay, yes, a rule was broken. How do you address the rule being broken? How is there a punishment put in place to prevent it from happening again? That's the only question. It's not, it's, it's not about the agents that are involved or the parties that are involved or anything like that. In fact, I, I almost wish that we could just remove the names that were involved and it was just Boxer A, Promotion A, here's what the test sample said, and then we make a decision moving forward. But I feel like just because of the publicity and because of the politics and because of the name, that's like clouded everything. I don't care who's involved. Did he have performance anti-drugs in his system? Yes or no? If the answer is yes, then he should face whatever punishment has been laid out for the industry, for the sport, to keep the standard. I care about precedent because here's what happens. What happens when it happens again? What happens when someone else tests positive? If we handle the previous situation poorly, then whoever tests positive next is going to go, well, wait a second. What happened with this case and this case and this case, but he got off, he didn't, this person was okay, this person got trouble. It just creates this imbalance in the sport, and that's where you start to run into a little bit of difficulty with running things. Okay, one of the things that I haven't asked you in your opinion is Tyson Fury versus Francis Ngannou. Yep. Um, I must say I had the pleasure of being at the red carpet event a few weeks ago, um, and I've also been watching quite a lot of the build-up to the fight itself. Mm -hmm. Now, yes, we want to see Fury versus Usyk. We want to see Fury versus Joshua. I mean, I'd even be open to watching Fury versus Wilder 4 right now if it means we're getting the best heavyweights fighting the best. Um, this is a situation where a lot of fans feel really passionate and have kind of had a negative approach towards Tyson Fury. There's been a lot of mention of him perhaps maybe ducking Alexander Usyk, but you know, as a man who's been involved in the sport for some time now, and I'm pretty sure you have a, a very heavy opinion on this matter, what is your take on Fury fighting Ngannou? But most importantly, do you believe at some point in 2024, we will get an undisputed heavyweight champion. So, I want to start off by saying I have two takes on this. Well, the, the floor's all yours. As a sports fan, as a content fan, as an entertainment fan, I love it. I love to see when you have different audiences, when you have different athletes participating in different sports, when you start to have crossover. I think it, it, it allows for a very entertaining and a very unique atmosphere and a unique event. I love it as a sports fan. As a boxing fan, do I like it? Not as much, not as much. In my opinion, we have the best heavyweight in the world right now. I think a lot of people could argue that, I mean, he hasn't fought in a minute, but he could be in his prime right now, right? We typically look at that early, mid thirties as t typically the athletic prime for most fighters, right? If you have a chance at, at, at an undisputed heavyweight championship, you want to see it. I wanted to see Fury Joshua three, four years ago, right, to, to unify everything. So as an entertainment fan, I love it. As an MMA fan, I do love it, right? I'm an MMA fan, I'm a boxing fan, I'm a bare knuckle fan, a kickboxing, I love combat sports. WWE? When I was younger, yes. Um, so as a combat sports fan, I love it. As a boxing fan, of course I don't. And people are trying to compare it to you know, when Muhammad Ali did it or when, when Floyd Mayweather did it, it was very different. That was at the tail end of their career. That was, it was very different. Tyson Fury, in my opinion, is the best heavyweight in the world right now. So I want to see him fight Usyk. I want to see him fight, I mean, it, it, Joshua, obviously. Those are the two big fights that everyone wants to see. But look, do I think 
do I think Francis has a chance? He has a puncher's chance, absolutely, obviously. I think everyone does in a boxing fight. But look, do, do I blame Fury for wanting to make a bunch of money? Absolutely not. I'm so, and I'm also supportive of Francis trying to make a bunch of money. I know a lot of people that have worked with Francis in the past. I've heard great things about Francis. He's a great guy. He has an amazing story. So again, look, as a sports fan and as a fan of boxers making the most money and fighters making the most money, go for it. But as a fan of championship boxing, of heavyweight championship boxing, I would prefer if maybe this fight happened at a different time. So I'm torn. Long story short, will I watch it? Yes, I will watch it. Big Mo, uh, the floor is all yours. You know what to do. Give me this microphone. <laughs> Give me this new branded Lights Out microphone. Ladies and gentlemen, your call. The rite of passage for boxers this Saturday. We talk about boxer breakthrough. We talk about young talent. We've got it this Saturday. Caroline Dubois going for a world title. Callum Simpson, Vidal Riley. Card is stacked with young breakthrough talent. So make sure you tune into Sky Sports to watch it from the world famous Your Call as all these boxers have their own rite of passage in this world famous arena. Make sure you follow myself. Make sure you follow Lights Out. Make sure you follow Boxer, follow Sky Sports, and I will see you guys on Saturday. Adios. Thank <laughs> you.